Hi, my name is Richard Duffy. I am the Product Evangelist at Leverage Technologies and I'd like to welcome you to another one of our Leverage Technologies tech tips. So one of the things that people tell us that um, they occasionally get a little bit confused about is adding new accounts in the general ledger. So what I thought I'd do in today's session is take you through uh, that process. Now, as per usual, I'm going to use the new SAP Business One web client that's part of SAP Business One version 9.2, but to keep our friends happy who like to use the Macintosh, uh, one of the things I thought I'd do is I'd do today's session um, using a Mac just to show you that the uh, SAP Business One web client works happily on pretty much any operating system uh, as long as you are using a web browser. And of course, as you know, right now the preferred web browser is Firefox. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to log on to the system now, and I'm going to log in using my account. Uh, and I am a super user so again remember with all of these videos I always log on with super user capability so what does that mean that basically means that if you want to you can deny access to this kind of functionality to other people inside your organization I've got full access to everything because I am the super user but of course and I'll cover this in a separate session the security capabilities and the ability to grant or deny access to screens and functionality in SAP Business One is very comprehensive. But I'm going to log in with my username and password and by the way uh, I know a number of you have actually tried accessing this server uh, and it's at SBO and now remember it's HTTPS of course because it's a secure connection but it's sboweb.leveragecloudtech.com.au slash dispatcher that's what I put in to get to the uh, to get to the web user interface, and we've got people who've tried it from all over the world. Uh, occasionally, I log in and it's set to different languages, um, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to put in my password, and then I'll choose log on. And then, of course, uh, the system now goes ahead, and it grants me that access, uh, and it logs me in. And then, of course, the first screen you're going to see is your cockpit and I am working here with the Fiori cockpit. There's my system messages. I'm just going to close that down because I don't really need to see that. Um, but let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, what we want to do in the general ledger. So of course remember our GL is part of our financials module and I can go in here into the chart of accounts and this gives me the ability to go and look at any one of these particular accounts that I want. So I have my level one accounts. Now one of the important things to remember um, is that with SAP Business One, with version 9.2, we've now given you the ability to actually go up to 10 levels of accounts deep. So it was previously five, with 9.2 it's now going um, up, to, up to 10 levels. So I can see my chart of accounts and as you know uh, I can pick any one of these buckets and it will show me all the accounts in those different areas of my chart of accounts. I've got my balance sheet accounts, my assets and liabilities, uh, I've got my P&L accounts, my income or turnover accounts, um, and my cost of sales accounts and so on and so forth. So you can, from this screen of course, you can go and you can pick any one of these accounts. Um, you can select the account and of course you can go in here uh, and you can view the account details. Now, if you want to edit the chart of accounts, the best and easiest way to do it is to go here into your edit chart of accounts function. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do, it's going to ask you, well, you know, do you want to see the entire chart or are you just making edits in one particular area? So let's say, for example, I want to see the entire chart of accounts. So all I'll do here is I'll say select all and then I'll say OK. And what do I now get? I basically now get every single account in the system. So one of the great things that, of course, you can do uh, is you can go in and you can call up any one of these accounts and you have the ability to go in and you can edit the description and so on and so forth. Now of course remember there are some things you can't change. You can't flag an account as being inactive or you can't delete an account if there's transactions and so on and so forth. But it re really does make it easy when you want to add new accounts because what you can do 
is you can go in here, you can select an account in the chart of accounts where you want your new account to go and you can simply go and select to add a same level account or a sub level account. So let's say for example, I have um, my furniture, fittings, tools and equipment and here's all my accounts and I've got my uh, IT equipment which is 112020. So if I select that account, let's say I have decided that I need to break out my uh, IT equipment into um, computers and telecommunications equipment. So what do I want to do? In this particular instance, I want to add um, a same level account. All right. So I can also go and tell the system what is my parent and that's this top level account. So I'm saying this is where it belongs. And then where does it sit inside my drawer? Well, I can specify that it sits after this account, before the account, whatever makes sense. Now it does make sense to try and keep these in some kind of order, all right? But with Business One, you do have the ability to be able to change that structure. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and say I want to add a same level account and I'm going to make this double one, two, zero, two, five. Now it's always a good practice to when you're adding accounts, always give yourself some flexibility and some room either side of your numbering ranges. Just makes things uh, nice and easy. And then we'll give this an account name and we're going to call this communications equipment all right and then of course we have our levels and as you can see right now um, I have the ability to be able to select up to 10 different levels all right but right now I'm putting this in at the same level as the other account so that's now in there and it's now in here as communications equipment there it is and I'll say update so that's now done my account is in there. So let's say now I want to go and I want to adjust this account, my IT equipment. So I'll say this is computer equipment, just for the sake of the exercise. Now, of course, remember, just because I've created that new account and changed the name of this account, that's not doing anything with the postings. If I need to now make adjustments with my postings, then of course I'll need to make the journal entries. If I'm using fixed assets, uh, and I'm posting depreciation values, I might want to make sure I go ahead uh, and set that up accordingly. So you'll see I've got my accumulated depreciation here for IT equipment. So I'm going to go across here into accumulated depreciation and I will arrow across and this now becomes accumulated depreciation for computer equipment. And we'll update that. And then, of course, what do I want to do? I want to add a double one, two, five, two, five account. So I'm going to add a same level account. Double one, two, five, two, five. And this is going to be accumulated depreciation. And this is going to be communications equipment. Now that's an awfully long, um, a long title, so I might just want to make this comms equipment. All right, and so I'll put that in there. You can hear things beeping away in the background here. People are sending me email messages. Um, but uh, anyway, so I go ahead now and I'll say update. And that's now done. So now I have my accumulated depreciation account for comms equipment as well. So it makes things nice and easy, very, very simple um, to, to add new accounts. Always make sure with all good things, as all good tradespeople do, measure twice, cut once. All right, so give some thought to how you structure your chart of accounts. Make sure that the changes you make um, make sense and fit in to the overall structure that you're trying to achieve uh, with your reporting before you go ahead and you start making any entries. Now, of course, you can go in if you want to um, and at any particular point in time 
um, you're able to go in and you can right click on this and you can choose to delete an account. Okay, so I can choose to delete this account if I've made a mistake, but only if I have not started posting any transactions across to this account. Right, so very, very important. And again, one of the other things you'll see here, uh, of course, is you have the ability to add a same level account, the same way I did it here. Uh, and I can go in here and of course, I'm able to choose uh, to maximize the grid or to restore the grid depending on how I want to view this information. All right, so just makes it nice and easy for you to navigate around in the system. And of course, as you've seen, we've done this inside the web browser and that makes life nice and simple. So of course, you're able to go in and you can change your, um, your title accounts as well. Now, of course, one of the things that you can do is you can go right back here and when you're looking at all of your accounts, you're able to then drill down into each one of these sections. So what this does is this gives you the ability, uh, for example, if you are looking at your chart of accounts and you're looking at each one of these drawers, if you wanna change those draw names, you also have the ability to do that, all right? However, the thing to bear in mind is that most of these drawers are, um, you know, the, the names that are given to them are fairly uh, well appropriate for what they are, your assets, your liabilities, and so on and so forth. So, you know, in your assets, you'd set up your current assets, your long-term assets, your fixed assets, they all become um, they all become accounts underneath that top level draw. But you do have the ability, if you want to, uh, to go ahead and rename those drawers. All right, so once I've gone and I've renamed that drawer, what you'll be able to see then is that that drawer has now been renamed. You just need to refresh it so you can see that change has taken effect. All right, um, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in today's session. So once again, if you've got any questions about how you use SAP Business One, uh, please feel free to reach out to any of us at Leverage Technologies. You can find us at www.leveragebusinessone.com.au. That's our dedicated website focused on SAP Business One. You can reach me, richard.duffy at leveragetech.com.au. And of course, you can call any one of our team on one 300 045046. We'd be more than happy to talk with you about SAP Business One. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to go into YouTube and click on the like video button. And until next time, have a great day. Thank you.